Zollinger Ellison syndrome. It is characterized by the gastric acid hypersecretion resulting in severe acid related peptic disease as well as diarrhea. Although gastrinomas are one of the most common functional pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, only 25% of the gastrinomas arise from the pancreas. But 70 to 100 percent of the patients with the Zollinger Ellison syndrome with men one syndromes have duodenal gastrinomas. So here the duodenal gastrinomas are predominantly found in the first part of the duodenum. As compared with the pancreatic gastrinomas, the duodenal gastrinomas are usually small and less than one centimeter and often multiple and are less likely to have metastasized to the liver at the time of diagnosis. And what is the pathology and pathophysiology of ZAS? Gastrinomas secrete gastrin. This gastrin in turn causes acid hypersecretion, which finally causes peptic ulcers and also the pancreatic enzyme inactivation. So, what are the clinical manifestations? What we can see in the Zollinger Ellison syndrome, one is an important clinical triad over here, peptic ulcer disease, usually in the duodenum, and it is often complicated by the ulcer perforation. So, duodenal and gastric ulcers are often multiple. Second important feature is the diarrhea, which is seen in greater than 50% of the patients. Not only that, steatoria gastric hypersecretion may be seen and pancreatic islet lesions and weight loss which is mainly caused by the pancreatic enzyme inactivation is a predominant feature in this case and uh, more than half of gastrinomas are locally invasive are already metastasized at the time of diagnosis. So now what about the lab findings? Lab findings are evident for increased gastrin levels and decreased gastric pH. So, the clinical presentation is uh, evident with the abdominal pain because increased gastric secretion can cause ulcers. This ulcers develops pain. So, abdominal pain is seen is greater than 75% of the cases and chronic diarrhea is also seen in greater than 75% of the cases. Both are considered to be the most common symptoms in the patients Zollinger Ellison syndrome and also nearly half of the patients have heartburn due to gastroesophageal reflux disease and other symptoms includes weight loss mainly because of the pancreatic enzyme deficiency approximately seen in 15 to 20 percent of the cases and gastrointestinal bleeding especially because of the ulcers in 25 percent of the cases. Now at last is the treatment. The only treatment option which is available is the surgical removal of gastrinoma and control of gastric acid secretion with the medication that is proton pump inhibitors. Patients with the Zollinger Ellison syndrome should be started on a high dose of proton pump inhibitors that is omeprazole 60 mg daily is the treatment of choice. So other points to consider over here is insulinoma. So, insulinoma is a tumor of the islet cells of the pancreas that is characterized by increased secretion of insulin and increased C-peptide that is a molecule that is cleaved from the pro-insulin during insulin synthesis. So, there will be B-cell tumors, deposition of amyloid which is a characteristic feature of the insulinoma and it is associated with the Whipple's triad that is episodic hyperinsulinemia and hypoglycemia where the blood glucose falls below the level of 50 mg per deciliter and hypoglycemia. Not only that, CNS dysfunctions are predominantly seen in insulinomas and reversal of CNS dysfunction can be seen upon restoration or we can see the resolution of hypoglycemia. So, glucogonoma is another tumor along with insulinoma. The most common site is the pancreatic tail and the most common site of metastasis is the liver. So this is what you should know about the Zollinger Ellison syndrome and few high yield points about insulinoma and glucogonoma.